Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King, one Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, huddled close to their small campfire on the bank of a navigable stream that flowed down from the Klondike region to empty into the Stewart River south of Dawson. The Mountie was nearly asleep when he was alerted by a nudge and a soft whimper. What's the matter, King? What is it, boy? It was a barely audible cry that came from somewhere on the dark river. I hear it, King. Come on, boy. Hurrying to the water's edge, Sergeant Preston saw something that was darker than the water that surrounded it. Presently, as the two-mile-an-hour current brought the object abreast of where he was camped, he made out a figure in the water clinging to a capsized canoe. Go on, King. I'll join you, boy, if you need help. The sergeant threw off some of his clothing, ready to plunge in to King's assistance if necessary. But the great dog knew his business well. Swimming strongly, he soon reached the side of the girl and waited until his master shouted from the shore. Grab that dog! Grab his harness! He'll bring you in! Whatever me says! Let the canoe go! There! I've got you! King felt a firm hand clutch his harness. On shore, he saw his master moving downstream to keep abreast. And then he heard the sergeant's voice call out again. All right, King! Bring you in, boy! King! Take me in, fellow! Take me in, King! The current had carried King and the girl a hundred yards downstream from Preston's camp when the big dog and his burden came to shore. That's a thing, good work, boy. Here, let me help you. Oh, 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 oh that wonderful dog. Are you all right? Yes, I, I guess so, but cold. We'll get back to my fire right away. I'd just about given up hope when I saw your campfire. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. You sure you can walk all right? Yes. Were you traveling alone when your boat capsized? I, I was alone, yes. I capsized the boat on purpose. Your what? It, it was the only way. Oh, steady there. You're all right. I, I, so weak. They, they were shooting at me. Shooting? Capsized. Capsized the canoe. They, they think I'm dead. What? Oh, she's fainted. <laughs> it's all right, King. You've done your part. I'll tell you to camp. In his camp, Sergeant Preston built up the fire and bundled the attractive girl in warm blankets. He administered stimulants, and then when she came to, gave her some hot tea, which she drank eagerly. Why, you're a Monty. Name is Preston, Sergeant Preston. You'd better finish your tea before you try to talk. There, it's gone. Feel better? Oh, yes. Ever so much better. I... I guess luck was with me when I saw your fire. I'd been clinging to that canoe for, well, hours. I couldn't have held out much longer in that cold water. It's remarkable you held out as long as you did. You're uh, new to this country, aren't you? How did you know? Your clothing, for one thing, it's new, and it was purchased in the States. And your hands, they uh, won't be quite as soft after you've lived in this country for a time. Is your name Judith Clark? Oh, yes, it is. How did you know that? Well, I heard that Don Clark's niece was to come from the States to take possession of the Potluck Mine. Did you know my Uncle Dan? Slightly. He kept pretty much to himself after he struck it rich. You knew he was killed a few weeks ago? Yes. Cave in, wasn't it? No. He was murdered. Murdered? Murdered by Jake Bascom and the other men who worked for him. Jake Bascom was his right-hand man? Yes. It was he who wrote to me to tell me that I had inherited the mine and suggested I come up here as soon as possible. You said someone was shooting at you. That was Jake Baskin. He and a man called Charlie. Charlie Pike. You better give me the facts, Miss Judy. But there's nothing you can do about it, Sergeant Preston. Tell me what happened. Well, I... I came alone as far as Dawson. There I was met by Jake Baskin. 
and a younger man, one called Steve Martin. They had a canoe to take me upstream to the potluck mine. Even though Bascom and Martin were strong paddlers, it took a long time to make the trip. Bascom paddled in the bow and Steve Martin in the stern. Little was said during that trip. I noticed Steve looked quite concerned, and several times he acted as if he wanted to tell me something. Finally, Steve leaned over and spoke close to my ear. Miss Judy, slide back a little bit so I can talk to you. I was sitting on the bottom of the canoe. I turned, and when I saw Steve's face, I, I knew he had something important to tell me. Jake's back was to us. Miss Judy, I don't like to tell you this. You shouldn't have come up here at all. Let me do the talking while there's a chance. Bascom and Big Charlie murdered your uncle. Yeah. Don't make that say anything Bascom can hear. Just listen to me. They killed him so they could take over his gold mine. But Jake wrote me a letter. He told me to come up here. He said I, I had inherited it. He wants you here just long enough to sign your name to a paper that'll transfer the mine. Oh. As soon as they get your signature, they'll stage another accident. This time, it'll be you that's killed. But I shan't sign any such paper. You'll sign it. You have a way of making a sign. But, but the law... The law can't help. The only law around here is the Northwest Mounties, and they're spread thin. Even if you got to a Mounty, it wouldn't do any good. Now, I'll do what I can to help you. You get away at the first chance. Hey there, Steve. Huh? Are you rested on that paddle? No. No, no, no. Talking to the girl. Just keep bending that oar. We don't want to keep Charlie and the others waiting. Steve didn't have another chance to talk to me until we reached a small dock. Yeah, I'll tie her up. It was Uncle Dan's dock, right near his house. The entrance to the mine was just about a hundred yards away. Steve, you ought to love the crew. Pile the girls duffling all them supplies on the dock. I'll go to the house and get a couple of boys to carry it. All right, Jake. Stay here, Miss Judy. Make believe you helped me unload this stuff so I can talk some more. You... You, Steve, you're in the game. I know that. I wish I wasn't. All I can do now is try to help you get away from here alive. I'll get these cases of canned goods out of the canoe. How many are there in the gang? Jake Bascom, Big Charlie, and I work for your uncle. Since his death, three of Jake Bascom's pals have moved in. Then there are six men. Five, not counting you. That's right. And they're holding poor old Ma Risley a prisoner in that house. Ma Risley? The grandest, finest old lady you ever knew. She kept house and did the cooking. But why are they holding her? Look over yonder at the house, Miss Judy. You see that dinky little window facing this way? Yeah. It's sort of a storeroom. That's where they're holding Ma Risley, and they'll take you there, too. They'll let you get acquainted with a poor old lady, and then give you to understand that if you don't sign over the gold mine, you'll watch her die. Oh. Slow and painful. Oh, no. There. I've unloaded enough stuff to make the boat real light. And Bascom is out of sight. Now hurry up. Move fast. In the middle of the boat, will you? I'll shove you off. But I can't, I can't paddle a canoe. Do as I say. You don't have to paddle. The current will carry you downstream right to Dawson. Now hurry up before those killers show up. Come on, Charlie. You and a couple of the others. Come on. Get in there. Oh. That's it. Now lie low. Here you go. Hey, Steve, what are you doing? I know. All right, Jake, I helped to get away. I told you at the outset I was against killing that girl. Maybe this will teach you I'm boss. No. Jake, you should get away. We've got to get after that girl. I can't wait, you mutton head. There's only one canoe around here, and she's in it. We can't let her get away. That double crossing Steve has probably told her too much. Give me your rifle, Charlie. Here, here there's only one thing to do. We've got to make sure that girl don't squeal. <laughs> you got her, Jake. You got her. Yeah. Come on now, get this stuff up to the cabin. Right, give me you see, Sergeant Preston, I knew Jake could walk along the shore to keep abreast of the boat and keep shooting until he got me. So I acted as if I'd been hit. I threw up my hands and fell out of the boat. The current carried both me and the boat downstream. I, I hope they've given me up as dead. I see. I wonder if Ma originally is still alive. I don't know. I. I'm afraid they'll kill her when she's no longer of any use to them. Oh, if you could only get help, get men to surround that place, you might capture those crooks. It'll take a long time to go to Dawson, get help, and go back to the cabin. If Mel Ridgely hasn't already been killed, her life is measured in hours, not days. I suppose it is. But 
You can't go there alone. King's as good as another man. Oh, but even so, it would be five against you and the dog, not counting Steve Martin. If Steve hasn't been killed, we might count on him for help. But... Miss Judy, I've got to get to that cabin as quickly as possible. I can't leave you alone. Some of those claim jumpers might be following the bank of the stream looking for... I them. understand. Looking for a corpse washed ashore. Right. Shall I go back to the cabin with you? I don't think you should. I'm not a very brave person, Sergeant Preston. I'll be less afraid if I'm with you and King. All right. Then we'll start at once. <coughs> yes, King. You too, boy. <laughs> Are you looking for something? Yes. Here it is. An extra gun and belt. Let me buckle it around you. Oh, I know so little about guns. Now, if you have to use it, just point it and pull the trigger. There you are. Now we're ready. Let's hope we get there in time to save more Ridgely. And now to continue our story. Judy was unused to walking in such rugged country, especially in darkness. Because of her, Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, had to travel slowly and make frequent pauses for rest. During the latter part of the trip, the girl leaned heavily on Preston's arm. You, you could travel so much easier if it weren't for me. Victor, Judy, we haven't much farther to go. But you, you must be tired. When we reach the cabin, you have such heavy odds That to face. may not be necessary. Not necessary? What do you mean? We didn't take time to get help from Dawson because of more originally. Time won't be important unless we can help her. Oh. You, you mean that those criminals have already murdered her? Well, we hope that's not the case, but if it is, if she's dead, then the day won't matter. No. No, it won't matter. We can backtrack. Leave those trucks in possession of the cabin and mine a little longer while we get reinforcements from Dawson. But if Ma Ridgely is alive... Look, Judy, up ahead. Oh, a light. Yes. Wait, it looks like a window. The window of a house. That's your uncle's cabin. Oh, at last. Wait here, Judy. The side of the cabin faces this way. That means the storeroom must be on our left. That's where the men held Ma Ridgely prison? Oh, yes, that's what Steve says. Now, you wait here. I'm going to try to sneak up to the window of that storeroom and see if she's still there. I'll leave King with you. <laughs> Sorry, boy, but this time I'm going alone. You'll have to stay here and guard the girl. <laughs> stay, King. He doesn't seem to like that. Sergeant Preston, I, I, I'm not afraid to wait here alone. Take King with you. No, not this time, Judy. Now listen to me. You have that gun. Yes. Now, if things don't go as we want them to, get away from here and take King with you. King will lead you over the back trail. If you follow the stream, you'll reach Dawson. Understand? Yes. Good. Stay, King. Stay there, boy. Good luck, Sergeant Preston. King and the girl stood quietly, watching Sergeant Preston move through the night toward the lighted cabin. The big dog felt hurt at being left behind, but he had long since learned the meaning of that word, stay, and he had learned obedience. Inside the cabin, three men dozed on improvised bunks. Steve Martin sat alone, while Jake and Big Charlie faced each other across a crude table, playing cards by the light of an oil lamp. The door to the storeroom was open. Beyond that door, a white-haired woman lay on a pallet. She slept, despite the ropes that held her helpless. Here's what I got, Charlie. <laughs> Looks like your cards ain't quite good enough. Three kings. Hmm. Beats two pair, huh? Here you win. Take the money. Your yeah, deal. It's no one's deal. Put the cash in your pocket, Jake. I've had enough. I wondered how much you'd have to lose before you'd say that, Charlie. Well, now you know. Maybe you've learned your lesson. The rest of us know better than to play two-handed with Jake. Steve, now that the game's over, it's time for you to make up your mind. What do you aim to do? Are you with my outfit or against me? Now, look, Jake. Just because it went against my grain to kill a fine girl like Miss Judith... It goes against my grain when one of my own men double-crosses me. I'd You're either it. with me or against me. There's no in-between. Is that right, Charlie? That's right, Jake. I've always been with you, Jake. I've been with you from the start. You know that. Yeah, from the start, but you had complaints to make. I don't like complaints. You're against getting rid of the old man. But murder's I didn't I... mind that so much. I don't mind a little argument. But when it comes to an out-and-out double-cross... Now, oh, listen, Jake, you can't call it a double-cross. I do call it a double-cross. I say that, girl, and you double-cross me. You told her all about the things that happened here. 
And then as soon as I turned my back at the landing, you helped her get away. But she didn't get away. She would have if I hadn't come back in time to do some shooting. No, Jake, She'd have got away. When she got to Dawson, she'd tell what happened here. We'd have the law on us. Instead of sitting back with a rich gold claim, we'd sit in jail waiting for the hangman. Jake, I warned you at the outset that I was against murder. I don't care what you're against. You heard what I said a couple of hours ago. If you want to stay with this outfit, go into that next room and shoot the old woman. With a murder chalked up against you, maybe you'll stay in line from now on. But maybe she... There's no maybe about it. We kept her alive only so as we'd have a way to make that girl sign over the property to us. Now the girl is gone, we don't need Ma Ridgely any longer. You'd better forget the old woman and do something about what you'll do when the girl's body is found. <laughs> I've got that all worked out. Someone's got to take the blame for that shooting. Yeah, someone has. <laughs> but uh, like I said, I've got things all worked out. Hey, Jake. What is it, Charlie? I hear someone moving around outside. I just happened to glance through the door into the storeroom. I think I saw a shadow outside the window. What kind of a shadow? I can't be sure, Jake. I just caught a quick glimpse of something moving outside that window. Uh, maybe it's a wolf snooping around or some other animal. Steve, you know that window's too high for a wolf to see in, even if he was to stand on his hind legs. I'd better step outside and have a look, eh, Jake? Yeah, Charlie, go ahead, but be careful. All right. I'll be if I go with you. You stay right where you are, Steve. <laughs> all right, all right. Sergeant Preston had taken another quick glance through the window, and he'd seen Charlie start toward the door with gun drawn. The outlaw pressed close to the wall of the house and edged toward the rear corner, where he was certain someone waited. Meanwhile, inside the house, Jake made further plans. Boys, if someone is out there, Charlie may have more than he can handle. Ah, uh, he's just seeing things. I don't want any suggestions from you, Steve. Boys, we'll go out the door and circle the building both ways and get your guns ready. Uh, Seems yeah. to me you're taking Charlie mighty serious. Maybe he's trying some sort of trick just to get away from here. Maybe he's planning some kind of a double cross, Jake. Have you thought of that? If anyone is likely to plan a double cross, you're the one. You already double crossed me once when you let the girl get away. Come on, boys. Go ahead. I'll I'll wait here. Oh no, you don't, Steve. You're going with us. Sergeant Preston had anticipated Charlie's move. He was waiting, gun in hand, when the outlaw rounded the corner. Got him up and keep your voice down. Huh? That's it. Now, don't sound an alarm. Bobby. That's right. But what are you doing around here? I came to have a talk with your boss. Now, drop that gun. Mister, if you think you're going to hold a gun hand on my boss, you might have mistaken. I'm holding a gun, and maybe you'd better be the one to drop it. What he said goes. Oh, glad you got here, Jake. We're all on hand. Yeah. We thought we'd better come out in case you needed help. It looks like you did. I'll keep him covered from this side, and you keep him covered from that side. Steve here can move in and take his guns. Right. Go on, Steve. Disarm the Mountie. If he grabs you and tries to use you as a shield, it won't do him no good. Because I won't mind it a bit if I have to shoot through you to get him. Seeing that he was covered by guns from two sides, Sergeant Preston realized that resistance at that moment would be useless. He stood quietly while the man called Steve disarmed him. I got it. So you're the one called Steve? Yeah. Now get inside. Inside the cabin, the three sleeping members of the gang were roused. And then six armed men faced the Monty. First off, Monty, I aim to know why you came around here snooping at that window. I'm giving you no information. All you'll get from me is a warning. I arrest you in the name of the Queen, all of you. <laughs> That's a good one. Without a gun, he's facing all of us and telling us we're under arrest. Mister, how do you <laughs> figure to back that command to surrender? What'll you do if we resist arrest? Resist it by putting a bullet through that middle button on your tunic. It's not a question of what I will do. You may be very sure you'll not get away with murder. He's right, Jake. Killing a Monty is a whole lot different than killing an old galoot like Dan. Keep quiet. What are you trying to do? Pass information out of this Monty? He don't seem to be in a position to use whatever he might learn. Shut up, Steve. A minute ago, I asked you a question, Monty. Why did you come here? I said I wasn't giving information. Well, I aim to know. Maybe that girl wasn't killed, Jake. Maybe you missed when you fired on her. Maybe you just winged her. Steve, I told you to shut up. All right, all right, Jake. The Monty must have had some reason to come up here. The girl was wounded and got to shore and... That's what I aim to find out. What about it, Monty? You heard what I told you, Jake. Maybe I got ways of changing your mind. 
There's an old woman in that next room. Look through the door, you can see her. Mrs. Ridgely. That's my name. Pete, go on, tie her and bring her in here. Right, Jake. Maybe the treatment we had in mind to bring the girl to terms will work on his mounting. Don't you mind me, Sergeant. You do whatever it is. Don't tell him anything to help me out. I'm not afraid of what these polecats do. Now, Mounty. Once oh, more, I'm asking you real nice for information. Did that girl tell you what happened here? And if so, where's she at? You answer up and you'll save Ma Ridgely no end of pain. Go on, Ma. Get into that next room. Sergeant, Sergeant, these fools can't kill Dan Clark. They killed him and they tried to kill his niece when she came up here. Monty, now you know we're not fooling. We're playing a game for big stakes. And a couple of more lives won't stand in our way. Now, where's the girl? You'll take it for granted she's alive. There's no one else that could have brought you up here peeking into that window. Where is she? Don't talk, Sergeant. Don't talk. Don't you tell him a thing. Suppose I do talk. Then what? You make things a lot easier for Ma Ridgely. You'll let her go? <laughs> I won't lie to you. You know I can't let her go. She knows too much about things around here. You'll kill her in either case. Yeah. Why are you stupid? Quick and easy if you talk. But if you're stubborn... I'm all set, Jake. You scum! Go on, do what you want to. You can't scare me. Don't you worry about me, Sergeant. If that girl's alive, it's up to us to see that she stays that way. Don't you tell Jake anything about her. What about it, Marty? Mrs. Ridgely's giving you the answer. And she'll regret it. I'll tell you just this much. By this time, the girl you tried to kill is well on her way to Dawson, and you can't overtake her. No matter what you do here now, none of you will enjoy the profits of your crimes. Thanks for telling us. We'll plan accordingly. Now, boys, there's no use keeping these two alive any longer. Let me deal with that money. Yeah. Preston you... looked at the five well, grim faces, and in each one saw the light of murder. Steve, standing slightly apart from the others, was deep in thought. He knew that he was marked for death. Jake would surely dispose of him after the Mountie was out of the way. Steve still had the gun he had taken from Sergeant Preston. He was considering a sudden attack on the crooks. The chances for success were slim, but at least he'd go down fighting. It was at that instant that the door flew open. Preston saw Judy and realized there still remained a fighting hope. He cried out. One King! King leaped into the room, charging at Jake like a battering ram. Then Steve went into action. He threw himself the nearest man, knocking them off balance. As Jake struggled to ward off the mighty dog, Sergeant Preston grabbed his gun. Charlie brought a weapon into play. I'll get him. Tell you, George. Steve fired first. Charlie spun from the impact of the bullet. His gun dropped from a shattered hand. And then Sergeant Preston fired. And another man collapsed with a bullet in his leg. Ma Ridgely dropped to the floor, grabbed Charlie's gun, and fired point blank. Oh. Ma fired a kill. Her bullet slanting upward found a target in an outlaw chest. I'll get you, I'll get you, Mounty. Hey, this. Oh. Here's another. Oh, I got this credit. That does it. Stand back, Steve. I have them covered. Don't shoot. Don't shoot again. My arm is smashed. I give up. I surrender. King, on guard. Watch them, boy. And if one of them wants any more trouble, you know what to do. The fight ended as suddenly as it had begun. Jake lay motionless, eyes glazed from blows of Preston's fists. Pete and Charlie whimpered like whipped curs as they lay on the floor with painful wounds. Another of the crooks had been knocked out by Steve, and the fifth lay dead. We got them, Sergeant. We got every last man of them. Collect their guns, please, Ma. Sure will. Judy, I was stalling for time, hoping you'd get a start toward Dawson. Oh, I, I couldn't go away and leave you to face things alone. Especially when it meant taking your fighting partner with me. You certainly saved the day. I? Oh, no, Sergeant Preston. I simply opened the door for King. Steve, I'm sorry about your case. I'll have to take you in with the others. I expect that, Sergeant. But he helped me escape. And he fought on our side. Those things will go a long way in his favor when he comes to trial. I'll put in a word for him, too, Sergeant. He was opposed to the murder of old Dan. He tried to stop Jake, but he didn't have a chance against all the others. Uh, maybe I'll escape the hangman and get off with about 20 years in jail, eh, Sergeant? You'll get off with a lot less than that, Steve. And when you do, Steve Martin, you come here to the potluck mine. There'll be a job for you. Good for you, Judy. Now we'll take these prisoners to Dawson. Got him, King. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, King, you wonderful dog. If it hadn't been for you... Yes, King. Thanks to the way you saved Judy's life, the way you went after those crooks, this case is closed. 